Hey, Kevin. What are you doing? Gonna stop in a minute. <laughs> I was gonna sharpen some tungsten. Tungsten for what? Well, the tungsten tips that go in the TIG welder. I'm doing some TIG welding on the bench, and I need to sharpen my tungsten, so I thought, well, let me cheat a little. Because I'm working with these really, really short ones, <laughs> because of the tight area that I'm working in on this sculpture, uh, instead of sitting here and trying to twiddle this thing around by hand, with my gloves on and so close to that wheel trying to sharpen it, especially because the tungsten gets hot so quick, it transfers the heat, and then you gotta sit there going, ow, 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 ow. All right, screw it. Put it in the drill. Chuck it into the chuck. Put it on slow speed. You don't need, you know, 8,000 RPM on there. And then you can just hold it up here with your grinder running and rotate it, spin it. Comes out nice, smooth, straight. Get a nice flame when you're over there working. So that's what I was going to do. Can we see? Yeah, come here. Come here, turn. I'll show you. You see, I just chucked it into the end. We'll fire this little buggy, puppy up. stones to fit it so you can get stones to replace them when you wear them out. So you see the one on the right, that's the one that I haven't sharpened. The one on the left is the one that I just did. So now I can just change it out, do three or four of them at a time, just have them sitting on the bench. That way when they get dirty, they get crappy, I touch them, you know, I put a little blob on it, whatever. I can just change it out and I can keep playing over there and keep working. And I'll come back after a while and do a bunch of them again. So, I understand there's a controversy whether you make it a sharp tungsten or a rounded tungsten. Which school are you in? Oh boy, here we go again. <laughs> so, I am of the school that if you sharpen it all the way to a point, the arc starts to wander. You know, it, it won't pick a point and stay there, so it's controllable. It, it'll sit there and hunt and peck and swirl around. At least that's what I've found. If I should take it all the way to like a you know like a needle point, I like to take it in just a little, leave the tiniest little bit of a flat spot at the top of it. So it's just a little chopped off right there, and that seems to give me a nice pattern. It seems to give me a nice stable arc, and it'll last a little while. But you can uh, you can change the shape of the grind. To change the shape of your arc depending on what you're working on. If you're working on a really, really tight joint, neat, clean, perfect, everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be, sure, you can take it down more to a point, have a smaller arc, so you get a smaller bead. But if you're working on things like I work on, where the fit may not be exactly right, you can go with a little wider or you know, a less radical point, make it a little wider, a little flat spot, you get a little wider arc that allows you to make a little wider well at the same time. Something you got to play with. I'm still learning. I'm still playing with it. It's a lot of fun to do. It's a lot of fun to change them and see what kind of difference you get. If you grind it this way into the wheel as opposed to this way with the wheel, does it make a difference in the arc? Not really, not that I've found. But if you grind it sideways to the wheel, yes it does. So that the lines basically, you know, the, the grind mark actually goes around the tungsten rather than with the tungsten. Yeah, it does change the shape of the arc over there when you're welding. It's really interesting to watch. You know, interesting to play, different shapes, different sizes, uh, different sizes for different amperages. When you go higher in amps, you can't really use that fine of a point because it melts the point away. So you have to go back and grind more often. So a lot of it is experience. You know, a lot of it is cool. Uh, I'm sure there's some books out there to talk about it. The old guys, that's who I want to talk to. I want to talk to some of you professionals and get your opinions on this. 
I know this is a worldwide you know, debate. This is going on in the welding community for a long time. I don't expect it to stop anytime soon either. <laughs> so let me get back to work so I can get back over there. We'll see you next time.